Hi, I'm Lisa Vogt. Welcome back to my studio. So, in the last video, I made a dichroic blank, and we just had some fun out here in the studio being spontaneous. Let's open this kiln and see what we have. All right, we're opening up our Scut Firebox 14. And look at this cool piece. Wow. This was a full fuse, and we've got some really fun colors, really fun patterns. This is coating from CBS, Coatings by Sandberg, out there in California. And look at these beautiful patterns, textures. And Look here, you can see the texture in this one. Uh, there's a texture over here. I'll put my hand back there so you can see it better. Look at those cool patterns and colors. And Look, we got some fun things happening here on the edge. We're not going to worry about that right now. We're just kind of going for something that is kind of spontaneous, fun, and um, we're just going to keep building. So I think... I've decided I want to add more to this because there's a lot of open space and I thought by adding a little more we could just you know experiment see what we come up with so I'll put this over here on my work table all right let's go over here and get some materials over here at my um, my workshop over here where I've got stuff we've got Nikki here with us again today helping with the filming thanks Nikki oops that's not true all right so over here this is where I keep some of my supplies this is kind of the messy spot of my studio so, but check this out. This is dichroic extract. You see that beautiful little sparkly stuff in there? That's the stuff that makes the dichroic glass so spectacular, beautiful, shiny, colorful. We're gonna work some of that into this project, just for fun, because we can. Then, uh, let's see, over here. Now, if we're using extract, we need to use clear powder frit on top of it to encase it, otherwise it just comes right off. And that's pretty darn disappointing. So I also have these, I'm gonna put this down for a sec. I also have these cutoffs. These are called Twisted Cane, and they're from a fabulous company also out there on the West Coast. And they, I've got all different colors. This is black, white, and clear, green and clear, yellow, white, and clear, some uh, yellow and clear, orange and clear. So I think I'm gonna work some of these into that project. Look at this pretty one with the red, white, and clear. Isn't that fun? So I'm gonna gather these materials and I also think I need a little pink brush. So I've got this bucket of brushes. I buy them at the hobby store. Just a whole nice assortment, some wide ones, skinny ones, all different varieties for different things I use here in my studio. So let's take these materials back over there to the work area and get started. <clears throat> so let's see. I also have my tubs of dichroic here. And this piece is really pretty, but there's a lot of transparency to it. I was thinking, and I like the patterns there, but I was thinking, suppose we take some more pattern dichroic and put it on top. Kind of bridge some of these areas. Now some of this dichroic is facing up, some is facing down. Just gonna keep a kind of a variety going and maybe, you know, use some colors, some of these areas where there's a lot of transparency. Look at that pretty pattern. Can you see that? No. Oh, well here, let me get it closer. Let me put something dark behind it. How's yes. that? Can you see it now? Let me see if I can help you with this. There, see, but it always shows up better on a dark background. All right, so I've put down some of these pieces of dichroic pattern on clear, which I'm really, really intrigued about. I like that. I like how they add a you know, different direction to the material that's below. But I think I want to add some of this dichroic extract to this piece. And I kind of like some of these you have labels on them. Some of them, the labels have come off. Um, so we're just going to wing it. You know, here's a, a silver dichroic extract. So let's go ahead and use some of that. I'm going to move some of these pieces. And open this up. We're going to throw caution to the wind and just kind of sprinkle this down. Ooh, isn't that fun? It's like snow. Ooh, I think I'm gonna move some of these, put some more down. Do maybe like a, almost as if this is like a river running across the piece of art. Ooh, isn't that fun? 
Okay, now to give it a bit of a um, pattern or direction to it, I'm going to take this paintbrush and sweep through it. See if we can create some sort of illusion that there is pattern and planning here rather than just kind of random. Of course, we don't want to lose any of that material, so let's brush that back on. And now when you ever use the extract, it will just sit on the surface of the glass. So I'm going to take this powder clear frit, I'm going to sift it over the top to encase it to ensure that it doesn't come off. Because if you're going to place it on your artwork, you definitely want to see it and you want it to show up. So I forgot to get a spoon. Let me see if I've got one right here. Yep, here we go. Thank goodness I've got a spoon. I take a spoon, I'm going to put this clear powder in my sifter. And I'm going to sift it. I'm going to move these other little pieces out of the way. I'm going to sift it over the top. Now when you do this, you probably should be wearing a dust mask. You know, be safe. Safe uh, practice is always important. Now the cool thing about this is everything disappears. Isn't that kind of crazy? All of my design has disappeared underneath that um, clear frit because clear frit, when it's in the powder form, it looks like it's white. So it kind of covers things up. Now let's go ahead and take some of these pattern pieces and put them on top. I don't know, this is just ridiculous what's happening here, but I'm having a good time. I hope you are, and you know, we'll just figure out, see what happens and what this thing looks like uh, after we go ahead and fi fire it to a full fuse again. And now I'm thinking maybe I want a couple pieces um, with a little bit of a pattern. Now here's one with a pattern. Here's one with a little bit of a dark color. Let's put that there. Um, yeah. See this? This is one of my favorite sounds right here. Isn't that nice? Doesn't that just put you to sleep? It's kind of similar to listening to the ocean or rain on a tin roof. I could do that all day. <laughs> I could do that all day, literally, quite literally. All right, but we don't have all day because we have other stuff to make. So let's go ahead and put some of these other pieces on here. Oh, this one's pretty. A little polka dot design. Let's stick that right there. And I have no idea where this is going, so we're just putting stuff together. Let's take some of this twisted cane, all right? And it's by, uh, made by a company called Twisted Cane, believe it or not. And let's add a few. Oh, here's a pretty blue one. Let's add that over here. Uh, white. We'll add the white over here on the dark one. There's some yellow over here. And normally when I make something, I stick to a color palette. And right now I'm not. I'm just using whatever comes into my hand and feels right for this project and just putting it on top. Ooh, let's do a this over the dichroic. That could be very fun. And then let's do that. Ooh, this is exciting. And then because we have the black one there, let's see over here, maybe I want something a little different, maybe this yellow one. Okay, I like where this is going. Here's another blue one. Let's stick this over here. And, oh, a red. I love red. I'll stick that right there. And because I read on one side, I think I want another one over here. And look, this is one of the end pieces. It's got a fun little shape to it. So let's go ahead and put that over here. All right, well, this is kind of really getting busy. So I think it's time to move this into the kiln. All right, so we're going to put this piece of glass in the kiln. Now, I just took it out, and I used this kiln shelf to take it to a full fuse and fire it. But I like to prime my shelves every time I use them, especially if I'm doing a full fusing. So I'm going to place this right here temporarily. And over here, if you look back here, I've got all of my kiln shelves lined up and ready to go. If they're behind the kilns over here, they're primed and ready to use. So I'm going to take this shelf and I'm going to go ahead and put it here inside the kiln. And now look how dusty my hands are from that shelf. So I'm going to go ahead and take this towel a lot of times I just wipe it on my pants, but wipe it on this towel. And now I'm going to pick up this piece and hope that these little twisted cane don't roll off on me. So, woo, here we go. Check that. Oh, boy, they are. So, oh, so far they're cooperating. If we make it to the kiln with all of them, we will consider it a very exceptional feat. I think we're going to make it. I think we're going to make it. There we go. All right, that's the benefit of only one cup of coffee. <laughs> so here it is in the kiln. 
Uh, what? It's looking crazy. I mean, I have no idea what this is going to look like. Hopefully it comes out really awesome. Pretty darn excited about it. You know, sometimes experimentation with, with different materials really leads to you being able to create something really phenomenal and extraordinary later on down the road. Everything you make, every test piece you make is an opportunity to go bigger, larger, more elaborate, and more exciting. So I love this type of work where I'm experimenting, just having a good time in my studio, no pressure, no obligation to start, finish, or complete something elaborate. Just have a good time with the material and in my happy space. So I'm going to go ahead and close this kiln. We're going to take this to a full fuse firing again. And then when we take it out, we're going to see what, what it looks like, see what we, you know, consider what we might like to do with it. So would you please give me some suggestions? I'm going to show you this coming out of the kiln on the next video. And uh, when you see it, I would like to know, hey, what do you think we should do with this thing? Should we cut it up? Should we just slump it? Should we... Uh, make it into a bowl. Should we cut it into hearts or cut it into diamonds or something? So I'm looking for your suggestions and your input on that. So until next time, I hope you, thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this video and please check out my website where you can subscribe to my membership video subscriptions. And uh, until next time, happy fusing. Please head over to my website for more exciting videos. What makes my video subscription different? My videos are artist-designed, project-oriented tutorials with step-by-step -step instruction you can trust to teach you how to create striking fused glass art. You get experienced guided video instruction plus a free ebook with project pattern, material list, color pictures, firing guides, and my pro tips. Plus, all access pass to my previously released premium videos. Subscribe Premium Annual and see your name here on the Wall of Flame. I'd like to thank my premium annual members. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for your support. Every time I go out in my studio and I see your names up on that wall of flame, I get a warm feeling inside because I know you support me and I love to support you with new videos. I'd also like to thank my basic plus members. You guys are awesome. You know, all this love just makes me feel so great inside. It just makes me really inspired to create new videos for you and for me so we can continue to create and have fun and take our art further. In addition to my video subscription, I also have video collections on my website that you might enjoy. I also have some eBooks for all skill levels and all types of construction. While you're on my website, be sure to check out my artware. I have sassy mugs, cool t-shirts, and eco totes designed just for you. And join the fun and use I Love Making Fused Glass. I'd like to thank these manufacturers for their support in helping me bring great videos to you. Thanks for joining me and happy fusing.